Okay, everybody, thank you so much for um, all of those who have joined us so far. It is my absolute pleasure to be hosting these Media Ed Club session um, and feature two of Chicago's greatest um, storytellers, community creative workers, and um, really some disruptors in their community. So um, without further ado, I'm going to get started and introduce our two featured guest speakers today. Uh, Jay Simon and Kent Jones. So Jay and Cayman, Jay and Kent together are the um, authors and the minds behind the Elvin Explores North Lawndale Coloring Book series, which we will be talking about today. Um, it is a very creative uh, work that has made some major waves in Chicago, specifically in Chicago's um, West Side community called North Lawndale, and they'll share a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. But before we get started, I want to introduce both um, Kent and Jay. Kent and Jay are partners, business partners of um, Jones Cornerstone, a creative agency, but they're also um, the minds behind the Elvin Explores North Lawndale book. Um, for it, Kent brought his um, expertise in creative work. He's an artist. He has created murals. Um, graphic design work and the, all sorts of different um, illustrations. And whereas Jay is a North Lawndale based and West Side born um, storyteller, photographer, and also creative artist that has dedicated his ventures to really highlight the cultural and historical significance of West Side communities. Um, there's so much more to say about both Kent and Jay, but before I dive deeper into that, I'd love to give them the floor so that they can share a little bit more about um, what Elvin Explores North Lawndale is, where this idea came from, and um, what they are seeing so far in terms of impact with this coloring book. So Jay, Kent, thank you so much for being here. The floor is yours. And <clears throat> Francia, thank you uh, so much for that warm introduction. Um, it's an honor for us to be here today on this warmer down. Um, so again, my name is Jay Simon. I'm a, a full-time entrepreneur, a creative uh, artist, visionary, and then the co-founder of Jones Corner Store uh, with Ken Jones. And so how this came about was uh, Jones Corner Store uh, is a uh, creative agency um, that was birthed in 2019 um, by Kent and myself. Um, Kent's grandfather actually had a physical corner store in the 80s uh, in Phoenix, Illinois, and it was called Jones Corner Store. Uh, and uh, after uh, Kent's grandfather passed, um, no one in his family took over the store. And so the store just kind of shut down and went away. And so me and Ken have been friends for over 15 years now. And so when he came to me and said, I want to reopen my grandfather's store and turn it into an art and a para company, uh, I was like, let's do it. I'm with it. And so we, um, uh, Got a, you know, got our EIN number, got our LLC. And so uh, Jones Corner Store was born, which is why when you look at our character, Elvin, uh, he's always wearing Jones Corner Store merchandise, like from his shirt, from his hat, you know, um, he's our mascot for the brand. And so um, with that, um, that's how Elvin kind of came to life. Um, you know, he was actually, it's interesting, he was a, uh, he was an illustration that Kent had did for another client. Uh, I won't say the name, um, but uh, the client didn't like him. And so, uh, you know, because me and Kent work so much in terms of our agency work, Kent was like, what do you think? Am I off on this, man? Is this not right? I'm like, no, I don't know what's wrong with but that brother, man, I'm like, Elvin is fire, bro. I'm like, let's just use him for our brand. And then, um, you know, uh, from there, uh, we used him. And it was he was just kind of like something that we used as a, as a mask, as a moniker. And then um, we had an opportunity, one of our clients, uh, Open Books, 
Um, they came to us uh, two, three years ago and asked uh, if we could do a coloring book. And if you know me, uh, even if I can't do something, I'm going to find a way to get it done. I came to Kent and said, hey, a client wants to uh, do a coloring book. You think we can do it? Uh, Ken was like, heck yeah, we can. And we decided to make our mascot the face of the coloring book. And so when we did that, they were like, we love it. We love the character. We love the idea. And so I'm from North Lawndale. Um, and, and, and so Elvin goes on this exploration of exploring the cultural amenities that are in North Lawndale. Um, the book is, 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 is a historic preservation, uh, is meant to educate, inform, and also be something that is um, something that can reduce anxiety and stress. You know, coloring is a way for uh, you to relax, you know, and coloring has become, it's not just for kids, but even intergenerationally, uh, you have seniors who like the color, millennials who like the color. Um, so I'll I'll kind of wrap my piece up and let Kent add his two cents in. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. I appreciate the introduction. And Jay, you know, he uh, speaks so well, you know, sometimes it uh, makes me nervous to come behind him. <laughs> He's such a good presenter. But um, yeah, so. Elvin is, uh, you know, like he said, we we like to call it our our Mickey Mouse. You know, it's it's our character that represents our brand. It reminds us of our family and our forefathers who came before us. You know, and that's something that we take note in, even in the character of elephants, how their memory is so great. Uh, if you know anything about, you know, elephants in real life, that's one of their qualities that people um, admire, and so. You know, it gives us a chance to think about, you know, like Jay said, historic preservations, places and people who came before us. And so it's so much more meaning than just a cartoon elephant uh, to the character that we've con a story that we've continued to develop over time. And, you know, he looks cool. So it's very palatable for young people as well uh, to take part in, you know, just appreciating uh, the art that we're creating with Elvin. So. We're actually on volume three um, that we'll be doing this summer. So we're excited about that. And um, so far, there's two volumes available. And we have a bunch of other uh, miscellaneous projects in the works as well. So it's just just an exciting time for us. I, I really see a lot of uh, potential and possibilities of what we could do with the uh, Elvin character. And so, yeah, so um, just to kind of tell you a little bit about me and Jay, we, we've been... Uh, business partners and close friends, like I said, over 15 years, I want to say at this point. And um, we're just some creative guys, you know, we bounce ideas off each other all day. And uh, we just want to represent, you know, uh, the black and brown people who work together, you know, and create amazing things in the city of Chicago. So that's what we got right now. Thank you so much for that. So, um, I want to ask a few questions about the coloring book as a tool for literacy and promoting literacy in the community. But I think for anyone who's not familiar with North Lawndale, um, we'd love to hear a little bit about why this was such a need for the community and why it's important to have a book that can relate to the people who live there and who you're trying to reach. That's a really great question. Um, the reason why the book is so important, particularly not just for North Line, but for the West Side, is because um, the West Side, for long as I, I like to say, the West Side is like a forgotten stepchild. Mm. All the other parts, you know about the North Side, you know about the South Side, but the West Side is like, oh, they're over there, but they'll be all right. And so for us, uh, especially for me being from the West Side and Ken is, He's been so much on the West Side. He's he's from the West Side too. <laughs> <laughs> um, we wanted to show the importance of um, the value that we have through our cultural amenities. Uh, a lot of people don't know that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He lived on the West Side when he was here fighting uh, against redlining and 
and the injustices that was going on with housing uh, in, in the 60s. And then also um, the original Black Panthers, their headquarters was on 16th Street. And you had, you know, you had so many other things, not just in North Line there, but so many things on the West Side that were historic and, and, and powerful that no one knows about. Um, the other thing that uh, ignited this, uh, particularly the, the me photographing those cultural, because in the coloring book, you'll see photos of the places that Elvin goes to explore, um, was we wanted to archive the West Side uh, when the George Floyd, you know, riots and things were happening during that time, um, we, my team and I, we felt like we didn't know if the West Side was going to burn again, you know, if it was going to come down. And so we wanted to document the, the, the history that was there and capture that um, and, and be able to uh, teach and educate not just young people or children, but intergenerational. So this is a, a intergenerational coloring book. Is not just for little kids, but it's for seniors. Uh, when seniors see the book, they say this is a history book. You know, obviously when kids see the book, they see it, it's fun and they're like, oh, Elvin has on Jordans and he's riding in the bot, he's riding in the car, like they can gravitate to it in that way. And then millennials see it, they they just see the the cultural relevancy and the, you know, and the fact that this is a the asset map to be able to find and locate because another one of the important things that we do is we put the addresses of the locations that Elvin is visiting in the book. And that's one of the most important to me pieces because now the coloring book goes from just um, <clears throat> just being a coloring book to now it's an actual exploration. So if you have this book and you have children or you have friends, you can actually go and visit these places that we have featured in the book. So you're seeing what it looks like. You're seeing Elvin go to these places and then you have the location where you can explore for yourself because we want people to know that the West Side is a safe place. You know, the mass media paints us out to be this violent criminal place that's unsafe to go, but we have some nice amenities on the West side that are friendly, that are safe and that are really cool. And so this is a really unique, innovative way um, that Ken and I felt like we can really reach people and this can be fun. You know what I mean? Imagine you never being to the West side and you get this book. Now you can have places that you can go, you can feel safe, that you can go to, that you can enjoy. And I always tell people like, if you want to give me a call and you're in the area and you want to go, I'll come with you and give you a tour myself. You know, so um, the the goal is for this, for Elvin to explore every neighborhood in Chicago, all 78, starting with the West Side first. Um, um, you know, Austin, Ingle, uh, East Garfield, everywhere that that's a neighborhood and then venture off to the north side and to the south side so um yeah that that's a little bit of the inspiration and goal behind what we're looking to do yeah and i would just like to add to that and say that um you know me not being a native of the west side but being someone who i consider myself a, um, a very close cousin to the west side <laughs> Um, you know, I used to come out there quite a bit and a lot of times, you know, I'll be visiting Jay or whatever family and that's it, you know, so I didn't know a lot about the different uh, locations and stuff. So it's been a, a tool for me to learn, you know, in the process of creating it. And I know the first book, you know, it was places that, um, you know, Jay was very familiar with already. But by the time we got to the second book, we were getting a lot of suggestions from other people in the community, um, you know, places that they thought would be a, a great, and we encouraged them to, uh, you know, give us recommendations. And so uh, as the third book approaches, we have even more places that, you know, may be unfamiliar to all of us. Like, wow, we never heard of that. You know, let's check that out. And it's just, it's like uncovering so many uh, gems in a community uh, 
that it is actually amazing to see it unravel. So we're very excited about that and excited to do it in other neighborhoods because um, now we've been in talk with uh, some possibilities in neighboring communities like Inglewood, where we're getting some good conversation there and um, Austin as well. And so it only makes sense uh, to continue doing this type of work. Thank you for sharing that. I think you touched on very um, important aspects of the book. And for everyone who's on, on the webinar, you will have a chance to ask questions. So if you have, or you're curious, or if you have any thoughts, please um, save them for, uh, for a little bit later today. But in the meantime, I think you touched on something that's really important. And it is um, creating a book where people who are the primary audience for the book can feel identified, can feel connected, but also discover and learn new things. Um, and one of the starting points was even from how Elvin looks like and what he does. Um, so can you talk a little bit about, you talked about like how Elvin wears um, Jordans and his aesthetic and how that's a reflection of the predominantly black community in Lawndale that you know, you're trying to reach. Hmm. Yeah. Jay, you want, you want me to talk or you want to? Yeah, you can go first. So the actual Elvin story, it derived from, uh, it was an older gentleman that I, he was actually somebody I just ran across um, at an old job I had, but he was a, he was kind of a historian in a sense too. And so he was telling me a story about how black and brown people, particularly um, about an elephant and how elephants in a circus are trained by a um, chain around their leg that's tied to a stake in the ground. And they train them like that from a baby. And as they get older, they, are get, they get used to not running away from the chain and the stake in the ground. But by the time they're full adults, they're so strong, they really have the ability to, to trample the entire circus if they wanted to but mentally they've been trained that they're not that powerful. And so that's really where the origin of it came from in conversation when I was working with a, a client on the elephant. And so, <laughs> and so that story just resonated with me and Jay because I feel like a lot of our people, we're the same way, you know, we don't understand our power. We don't know how, how powerful we are. And so um, we wanted him to kind of represent this younger audience um, who from the surface, it may look like, you know, hey, you're a sneaker person, you know, you're, uh, you know, kind of a cool guy, so to speak, and you're into fashion and all these other things, but, you know, there's some brilliance, right? Because Elvin is going all these places, he's learning so much, he's learning about his history and everything. So there's some genius and brilliance uh, that he has that on surface you might not uh, recognize and, um, for the most part, that's, you know, we want it to be relatable to all audiences. So, yeah, that's where the aesthetic for Evan comes. Jay, you want to add to that? Yeah, um, he, he pretty much touched it. You, um, you know, we're giving a background origin of, you know, the psychology of that, because it, it's similar to us where, you know, Black folks, we don't realize how powerful we really are due to so much trauma and things that have happened to us. So Elvin is this representation, you know, for all of us, you know, uh, really. Uh, and, and that's what we kind of like about, you know, an animal can represent all people, not just one type of people, you know, and normally characters are, they resonate more than, you know, if you had a, a person that just was, you know, featured in color, you know, a character makes a person open up to see the world, to explore, uh, to imagine, you know, as Ken stated, like we we see Mickey Mouse and say, Elvin can be the next Mickey Mouse. Like, he, and, and, and that again, that's an animal. You know, I have um, four children, um, the youngest of the four, one year old, two twins that are two uh, and a seven year old and seeing how they connect with the character, how they get the book. And they, like, they just say, Elvin, Elvin. And that gives me like so much complete joy because I know like 
I'm teaching them, like we're teaching them through this character, like that they can see, that they can see themselves in, that they can journey, you know, and um, one of the, the, the parts of the book, we have a crossword puzzle. And my seven-year-old daughter, Jalea, um, that's one of her favorite parts, you know, of the book uh, is the crossword puzzle. And that's how she was able to learn the streets that are in the neighborhood. So now when we drive in the car and we go places, she's like, Daddy, that's Kildare. Daddy, that's Costner. Daddy, that's Western. Daddy, that's Thurman. Like, she's able to remember these places based on the crossword puzzle that we have in the book. So we really just feel like this is a tool that reaches uh, all generations, intergenerational, whether you're a child or if you're a, a, a elder. A lot of the seniors, they say, you know, thank you for documenting the history that go you know, that happened in our neighborhood and preserving that history. Because as we all know, critical race theory is a real thing, right? Like. They're trying to take history out of schools and away from, you know, out of books and, and, and to turn us what's the truth. And so we feel like this is a way to combat that. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a way that preserves. Uh, it's a way for people of all ages to be able to learn. Uh, and this is something that can grow, you know, uh, in terms of learning. So really proud of it. Thank you so much um, for sharing that. So before we keep moving along, I want um, our people to be able to see some of the books. So I'm going to scroll through the book here and we may stop at some pages. So if anyone has any questions or comments, feel free to unmute yourselves and share. Um, but I'd love to see, you know, Let's stop at this page and talk a little bit about this page in particular. And for everyone who's a Chicagoan, you will see um, <laughs> a face that's most likely familiar, which is our mayor, Brandon Johnson, getting a haircut. Yep. But for anyone who's not from Chicago, um, how do you think this is important? And why did you include this in the book to you know, share with kids or adults who are using this as a tool to learn and explore their, their neighborhood and their city? Very good question. So um, this is one of my favorite pages, um, just because, you know, when have you ever seen a mayor in a coloring book? You know, that in itself is history. It's historic. Um, but the reason why we put this in there is, um, if those of you didn't know, our mayor, uh, Mayor Brandon Johnson, He's from the west side of Chicago. Um, he's from Austin um, neighborhood, and he gets his haircut in North Lawndale. Um, the barbershop that he goes to is what you see here. He goes to Principal Barbers, which is on Ogden and Avers, um, right there. Um, that's the photo of the barbershop. And so because we're talking about North Lawndale, Principal Barbers is in North Lawndale. And we thought, man, how cool would it be for Elvin to stop as he's uh, exploring the neighborhood to stop and see the mayor getting his haircut, right? And then it also just in terms of culture is so relevant because, you know, this is a time where we, you know, we have a black mayor as a mayor and for those to see or who didn't know, like the the comfort in finding like, oh, wow, the mayor gets his hair cut in North Lawndale at this barbershop. So we just felt like it would be really, really culturally relevant um, where historical um, and then from an educational standpoint, it it brings attention to also show how, you know, even though he's the mayor, he's a regular person, like he goes into neighborly communities to get his hair cut. And um, we just found that it would be really cool to to showcase. Yeah, and so uh, I would like to add to that and say uh, Jay's, Jay's being, uh, this 
this was his idea to put in the book. And this is why, <laughs> this is why me and him work together so great. Cause he'd be having some amazing ideals and um, I'm just honored to be uh, the hand that could bring it to life. But um, also, you know, Brandon, Brandon Johnson, he has a really unique haircut. <laughs> if you ever see him, you know, he kind of got his own style with that. So just uh, when I heard that he gets his haircut in North Carolina, I'm like, wow, like, you know, that's a no brainer for us to put in a book. And hopefully we, we were the first uh, artists to showcase him in some form of, of art that went uh, in a coloring book that went out to the community. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I believe he has one. I'm not 100% sure yet, but we're going to find out. But yeah, so also um, we do a tour with our coloring book um, every time we release one. And so uh, Principal Barbers was actually one of the stops on our tour and we curated a very unique experience. We had a um, invite only crowd because uh, we didn't want to overcrowd the space and we took it uh, to the space after hours and we had food and a uh, great time. We all colored and it was it was a cool thing. It was for it was for the uh, 21 and up crowd. So it was a it was a good time. Um, again, just tapping into the intergenerational things. And when everybody was coloring, some people was like, man, I haven't colored in so long. And wow, this feels so good to color again. And uh, so we had an amazing time. But uh, we did that at Principal Barbers. It's a very nice space in North Lindale. Uh, just like Jay said, it felt absolutely safe. And it was just uh, welcoming and warm. And uh, it was just an honor to, um, you know, facilitate in that space. And shout out to uh, the owner, Bobby. Yeah. Thank you for that. So I, I'm going to keep scrolling um, through the book and, you know, give everyone a chance to get a feel of what's represented in the book. But you talked about these being more than a book. So you've had the coloring book series and volume one, volume two, working in volume three. But you have the community who's been very receptive to it. And this has become, and this was um, one of the phrases you used, Faith, um, an asset map, right? So this is more than just a coloring book or a way to promote reading among, among community members. Now this is a testament to what's available in the community. Tell me a little bit about that. And I'm stopping here with the Bee Love Cafe because I think it's a small business in North Lawndale that many people may not even think is possible to exist in North Lawndale if they just follow traditional like media sources where they think it's a community where everybody's getting killed and it's just violent and dangerous. But you see in contrast in the book, you see a thriving cafe where Elvin can get a strawberry banana smoothie. So very different from how media has presented this area. So tell me a little bit about that that sort of asset map and asset framing of, of North Lawndale? So um, as Kent mentioned, uh, when we did the first book, um, it was pretty much us looking at the resources that we had um, to do the book. Cause this was the first one we had never did a coloring book before. And so um, we had identified five sites and um, from that, we did a coloring book tour. Uh, and that tour, uh, each site that we showcased in the book, we activated a space. We activated their space with a different age group. So for instance, um, in the first book, we had Stone Temple Baptist Church. Uh, and the reason why we had Stone Temple Baptist Church is one, um, Kent and I are very good friends with the pastor there. Um, she's one of our clients, but two, that is a landmark church um, because that is the church where the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He preached at when he came here. A lot of people don't know um, the reason why he ended up on the West Side is because um, Mayor Daly, um, the father of Mayor Daly, he had a lot of uh, power amongst the South Side pastors. And so when King came up here, none of the Southside pastors wanted to have him come to their church or to preach or do anything of that nature. And so the West, the West Side, we embraced him. We welcomed him, um, which is why he stayed on 16th Street, um, 16th and Hamlin. 
and then also preached at that church. So we we wanted to showcase it from a historical lens, um, the first volume of the book. Uh, in each location, we had different age groups um, there. This next installment, what we're looking at now in volume two, we had, uh, during our tour, we asked the community to select locations that they would like to see in the next installment. That was a part of our community engagement approach, whereas this isn't just ours, this is, this is the community's book, and we wanted to come from, from that lens. And so a lot of the people, um, they were like, you should have B-Love in here, you should have this side in here. And so we took an assessment from the people and that's how B-Love got in here. And so B-Love, just to give some framework, it is a cafe. Um, they have, they do beekeeping. Um, they they make honey um, straight from the, the bees that are there. Um, they're also in partnership with the North Londia Employment Network. So they uh, do a lot of work with um, folks who are seeking jobs, particularly the reincarcerated um, and a lot of the reincarcerated that, that they work with with North London Employment Network work at Beloved as well, you know, and, and they provide jobs for that. And they do, um, their approach as a cafe is all the, you know, they have turkey, they have fresh fruits uh, and vegetables. Um, they have really great smoothies, uh, really great lemonade drinks. Um, and it looks modern, it looks new, it doesn't look old, you know, because a lot of times people are like, oh, you know, that, that that's an old location or it looks old or it isn't inviting. No, when you go to Beloved Cafe, it's warm, it's inviting, and you're, you're going to see someone in community that's there. They're going to say, hey, how's it going? How you doing? It's a family, friendly atmosphere. And so uh, because the community wanted it uh, to be featured, um, we had it. Um, it's ran by a Black woman. Um, that's the owner. Um, and uh, we wanted to make it something that, you know, um, was uh, relative. And so the reason why we chose the strawberry and banana smoothie is that's my favorite smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, uh, we did, we hosted a because again, each site we host an activation. And so for the Be Love Cafe, we did uh, last year during our tour, we did a, um, we did a, uh, uh, a uh, open mic in a um, smoothie social for teenagers. Um, and, the, and the reason we did it there for that is because down the street is in high school, DRW. And so we wanted to engage that demographic and we know a lot of high schoolers especially like with chance the rapper and stuff like hosting open mics and stuff a lot of high schoolers are into open mics so we figured that would be a good way to engage um that demographic because we're always like you know how does this just go beyond being a cool coloring book how do how do we engage community with the book right and so we had the book there, so a lot of the teams were able to color. We thank you, paused. Yes, I think so frozen. too. Yep, you're frozen. Oh. Yeah, Jay Jay's at the studio location right now. Maybe the internet. There you go. Oh, you're back, Jay. I think we am I back? Okay. Yes, you are. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm trying to go back to my stream. Okay, there we go. And so, so yeah, so we engaged that space with teenagers. Um, they were able to get on the mic. Um, the first 20 people got smoothies and it was really good. And the staff, they loved it. They said, can you all do this once a month? We really liked it, you know? And so the fact that we were, we were able to engage every demographic just through a coloring book is always amazing to me. Thank you for sharing that. So um, as you know, at, at the Media Education Lab, we're very interested in how people are taking media literacy to their community. So this is a perfect example of using media 
to promote not only reading, but many other different um, skills and understanding of the culture of their community, of, of the assets in their community. So I want to talk a little bit about, and I'm going to stop sharing this, but I'm going to share now some of the um, media coverage that, that you've gotten with this book and ask you about any unexpected outcomes, like anything that you were not expecting to get out of the coloring book that you ended up seeing as a result of launching either the coloring book or um, hosting the activations or doing the tours. Like, is there anything that you were not expecting to see and then you suddenly saw after after the launch of the books now in plural? Hey, did you want to go first? Or I try to yeah. Go? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I would just say, you know, um, as far as from, from a media standpoint, we did, we were on iHeartRadio. That was pretty cool. That was something that uh, when we started the tour, it wasn't on our radar. And, um, you know, we had a network of someone, uh, a few people who had some affiliation with that um, particular outlet. And they asked us to come on and, you know, talk about the book. So that was cool. Uh, to take us and our team, a uh, couple of uh, people who helped us with the tour, we all went up there, and uh, it, it was fun. It was a great time. So that was very cool. Um, Columbia College, we did a radio um, a visit there as well. I think twice, Jay, was it? Um, there as well. And, um, you know, so it's cool to see all of these things unfolding through a coloring book. And, you um, you know, one one of the themes I think we kind of have with the coloring book is kind of going in and out of uh, real life and imagination, you know? So like, you know, like Elvin's wearing the clothes. So we get people who ask us about the clothes sometime and, you know, like I'm wearing the Jones Cornerstone hat right now and, you know, the hoodies and everything. And, you know, and then we'll jump back into like a uh, imaginary world, you know, where uh, people are asking about creating more characters and, uh, on the tour, um, one of the one of the highlights from the tour, me and Jay always talk about this little boy uh, when we were at BBF doing the activation. We passed out some stickers, and I think that was our first time passing out stickers, actually. And the little boy took the sticker and put it on his forehead and walked around like that the entire day. It's such a small thing, but it was a big thing to us because I'm like, wow, you know, he 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 wanted to take all his pictures with the sticker on his head, and and he was talking to us about man, y'all should do this character and that character and who's Elvin Friends and da-da-da. Because, you know, kids, they're in the imaginary world, so they're, like, they're building the story in their head. So just to see that, it was so cool. And um, at that particular location, a lot of grandparents brought their grandchildren, a lot of uh, parents brought their kids, and to see them all together, working together and coloring and stuff, it was it was just a moment for us, like, wow. And And we actually, we didn't expect that location to have – the turnout that it did only because it was our last activation, you know, of the tour. And maybe we felt like we didn't promote it as well as the other locations at that time, but it actually had the biggest turnout out of all of them. There were people still coming even, even after the event was over with. So we were super excited about that. And we had Ida's ice cream, which I don't know if y'all had her ice cream, but it's always a pleasure to have, have that too. So go ahead, Jay, what, what you wanted to say about it? No, uh, we weren't expecting that. Like, honestly, you know, we weren't even expecting to do a tour, right? You know, we they, we were asked to do a coloring book. And, you know, uh, from that, you know, this tour happened. Or, you know, I, I mentioned because it was, it was like, hey, you know, we got a cool coloring book. And I'm like, all right, what else, though? Like, who knows how are we engaging people, though? And so we talked about a, a tour, and they were like, sure, let's do it. And, you know, uh, shout out to Stain's Family Foundation and um, also uh, Wintrust, um, the Westside Chamber of Commerce, uh, Nation Builders. You know, they were our sponsors um, for the book, for this coloring book and the coloring book tour. Um, and we had no clue that we would be on volume three right now. You know, um, we had no clue that we would be doing a coloring book. 
You know, our our initial mission with starting Jones Corner Store was to sell T-shirts and apparel. And so now we've kind of like, oh, coloring book. <laughs> you know, we, we kind of see that like people find the value in that. You go where the value goes. Not to say that we've gotten away from doing uh, apparel, because as you see, Ken is wearing a hat right now. You know, it, it adds to our brand story, our brand message. So we, to be honest, we had no clue. Um, as Ken said, that we would be on iHeartRadio. Another cool thing um, is we had one of our PR persons that was working with us last year. She went to um, a rooftop cinema event uh, that Dropbox hosted. And um, she was able to get pass out some coloring books. And one of the coloring books that she passed out was to um, DJ Terry Hunter, uh, a three-time, you know, Nom Grammy nominated, you know, DJ that that did DJ work for Beyonce, right? Very well renowned DJ, and we have photos of him holding our book, smiling with it. And so that was a moment um, that we realized you never know where this coloring book, whose hands did it end up in, you know, and who will touch it and who will advocate for it and who will see it. So. It's just been a, a very uh, cool journey, and we're 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 so grateful for the for the ride. That's amazing. So, um, surprisingly, we're almost out of time. So, I want to give an opportunity for anyone to ask any questions or any comments, or if you're a Chicago and do you have any suggestions? Would you like to see? Alvin in your neighborhood? Tell us a little bit about what you've learned in these almost. Um, 45 minutes of, of talking with Jay and Kent and getting to know the story of Elvin. Okay, I see a question in the chat um, from, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, um, Savira or I hope I pronounced that right. And if I didn't, I am so sorry. And please omit yourself and correct me. Um, Xaviera. <laughs> Xaviera. Okay. So, Xaviera, thank you for your question. And she's asking you, Jay and um, Kent, do you plan to expand outside of Chicago? Yes. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, our goal is to expand, um, you know, one step by step. Um, doing all the West Side and then doing all of Chicago. And hopefully um, Elvin has a, a little bit of presence in Indianapolis. Um, we we kind of work with the, uh, the art council that's there. You know, while I was um, uh, on a road trip uh, just out of town, you know, I passed the book out. And so there may be an opportunity to do an Elvin Explores Indianapolis coloring book. And then also um, Miami. Ken and I went to uh, Miami um, last year for our Basel. Um, and we passed out a few books to some folks. And they were like, man, we need to Elvin Explores Miami. And so um, there's interest. So answering your question, yes, but um, we want to we want to start home first in the imprint shop. Yeah. And I would just like to say, first of all, uh, beautiful name. And secondly, uh, where do you live? Because are you saying you would like it to come to your community? Is that what you're saying? Because we, we can start there. <laughs> um, well, I am originally from Evanston and um, I've left and moved to LA, New York, Atlanta. I lived in Minnesota for a bit and I traveled throughout um, Germany and parts of Europe. Um, but the reason why I asked is because um, I just moved back to Chicago about a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I was living in Atlanta um for five years and in that time um I was there during the pandemic and watched really how 
um, inflation really hit the South bad. And so it's so interesting because I just was talking to this guy uh, who works at Philly's Best off of Jackson. And he was talking to me. We were talking about like um, MLK. And so even you guys just dropping that wisdom about MLK being from, um, I'm not being from, but uh, but doing a lot of his work and staying on the West side, I was like, wow, that is just mind blowing to me. And like Atlanta literally needs this coloring book, mm -hmm. like in a way that you wouldn't even understand. Um, there was a gentleman who joined the call. I sent, um, I sent him your link. Um, and he actually helps with, he actually works, um, for the mayor's office in Atlanta. Um, but he specializes in, um, education and then also businesses in Atlanta. Um, so Atlanta has a very huge program, um, that supports black business and make sure that everybody, you know, make sure that you're expanding correctly and things of that nature. And then also maintaining historical integrity, right? Like we have a lot of they have a lot of business. I'm saying we, like I still live there, but uh, there's a lot of businesses out there. Um, not sorry, businesses. There's a lot of initiatives out there to make sure that like even the communities maintain. And right now, while there's this huge hit that's coming because of all of the big businesses that move down there, like Google, Microsoft, uh, Amazon built like three fulfillment centers during the um during everything. And just to give you an idea of what inflation I'm talking about, I was paying $1,240 for a one bedroom with an upper loft. And then by the time, after two years, my rent went up to $3,500 a month. <laughs> That's not even like real. They don't have any rent control. So there's a lot of things um, that are happening you know obviously we've seen um gentrification happen in different neighbors neighborhoods um and atlanta is a black city built on black dollars and black labor whereas chicago is definitely built on black labor but you know dollars of of everybody else and so when you start attacking a space and gentrifying in a space where um where Honestly, they don't even know what it looks like. Like they're they're not even prepared because they're not used to that. They're not used to people coming into their city and like shaking things up. Whereas we've lived alongside, you know, um, different um, cultures for some time now. It's just a very different experience from the South. And so being somebody who's from the North and kind of witnessing how everything is, the takeover is happening. I'm like, no, like this is how, the mom and pop shops, like the barber shop, uh, winds up getting shut down. And now, even though, you know, to me, it's like a time thing. Like you want to make sure that the information is getting into the hands of the kids and whoever else lives there so that the memory, we understand like what we're fighting for. You know what I mean? Like you put the, you bring that information to the communities and they are able to, um, start creating that legacy now before it's gone you know what I mean and so I I'm a thousand percent on board with what you guys are doing I'm so excited that uh this link was sent to me but um yeah Atlanta was my first uh thought on that and obviously other cities too but um yeah um may the Lord be with y'all because I'm super excited for what you're doing can you put your email in the chat I want to make sure we stay in touch with you and all sure connect uh, with um, some folks in Atlanta. I think Atlanta would make sense. Ken's daughter, uh, my goddaughter, lives in Atlanta. So we're, we're often at times there. And then also I have family in Atlanta as well. So I would love to try to make that connection and make that happen. Absolutely. Also, another thing that somebody, I don't know if you guys are all already aware, but I know a guy out of LA that actually used to run um, Kanye West uh, Dream Foundation. And he was telling me that um, he now does like, I think he's doing like music therapy in schools out of LA. 
but he was telling me that um, what he did was become a vendor for the school. I don't know if you guys are already doing something like that, but becoming a vendor for the um, for him for the LA public school systems. And so then that was where they started getting grants and stuff. And so because the arts are so, you know, um, minimal in the schools nowadays that he's creating, you know, they're looking for things to just bring into the schools directly. Um, so that's just another thought that I'm putting out there for you. Not sure if you've already like looked into that at all. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am so excited that this space is you know, promoting and creating space for more conversations, more imagination of where Elvin might go to um, and how it might help preserve history in communities that are changing, but how it also eventually down the line might become a form of education, preservation, and even resistance to the changes um, that are happening in so many communities in the United States. So I really appreciate that you shared um, with us and we are almost out of time, so we have two minutes left. In that time, I would love to just give um, each one of you 30 seconds to share one insight of the book. If you had to share it with the President of the United States in 30 seconds, what would you say about Elvin? Um, you can, you know, whoever wants to start can start, then we'll pass it on to the next person, and then we'll let everybody enjoy the rest of their day. Who's first? Kent, do you want to start? <laughs> I guess I'm first. Dear President, uh, this, this is our Mickey Mouse uh, for Chicago. I think that it will impact young people to understand their history in a very fun, non-threatening way. That's what I'm going to say. I'll go next. Uh, dear President, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, dear President, this is uh, a asset mapping tool that can really generate a lot of attention in tourism, not just in Chicago, but everywhere in every neighborhood, uh, letting people, children, youth, different generations know about where they're from, why they should be from there, and why they should love where they are. Thank you so much. Um, if any of our participants want to share their summary of what, you know, how they would describe the book to anybody, you are welcome to do so. If not, I really want to take just 10 seconds to thank everybody who joined us and everybody who might be watching this um, later on on our website, on our YouTube channel. We, I want to thank you both, um, Jay and Kent, for being here, for sharing a little bit about the coloring book, your vision, and the work that you're doing for your communities. And everybody else who shared a connection, who had a reflection, who thought of something because of the book and because of this session, we thank you, we see you, and we appreciate you. Um, thanks so much again, and stay tuned for more um, events and free webinars from the Media Education Lab, where we will be showcasing creative work that's promoting media literacy, that's using media as a tool for different purposes and changes. And um, thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you.